Okay, everyone, so now you're going to, um, to meet Marina, Marina Carrington, who is going to be the other half of the Jane and Marina show at Trendy Press next year. <laughs> so you can watch out for that book. We will send out information to you all if you have your email address, okay? So let us know if you're interested in learning more about their collaboration. But welcome, Marina. sneakily started working on a few. So as you know, I'm an illustrator. I'm what people might kindly describe as an unusual illustrator. I don't want to know what they unkindly <laughs> describe me as. They don't need to tell me. So um, when I begin an illustration, um, unlike most illustrators, I don't pick up a pencil and sketch. I don't pick up a pen. I pick up my camera in my walking boots, and I walk out into the forest, or in my case, in Australia, into the bush. Um, and I collect two things. I collect photographs, and I collect things. So I will pick up leaves, and sticks, bits of bones, um, little bird skulls, everything I find in the room. And people will give me these things, and I'll, I'll tell you a little story about one of those things in a minute. So I bring all these things home and I gather them together. So I photograph all the things that I've found, the leaves and the sticks and the bones, and I file them away <coughs> in folders on my computer. And I open up a file in Photoshop and I start layering. So I will usually start with the main part of the illustration. So if I'm creating a lion, I will build up out of those bits of moss. Um, if there are people in the illustrations I photograph, quite often my children or their friends in the studio, and I photograph them in silhouette. That's what I do with the leaves and the twigs as well. So with the small things, I'll use a light box which lights them from underneath, and that creates a perfect silhouette. And in the studio, I light the wall behind, and the person in front um, can show up as a dark silhouette as well. So I'll create the silhouettes in the front of the image, all out of photography. There's no drawing involved, which takes a lot of convincing of people sometimes. There's no, <laughs> they really are not finished drawing photos. And then I will start layering the backgrounds. So when I, I photograph the backgrounds, quite often I'm looking for little micro landscapes within the landscape, which means if you're walking along through the bush near our house, you'll probably find me lying in a ditch. <laughs> You've got very wet ditches around here, I have to say. Um, <laughs> photographing <laughs> honey mushroom and um, bits of moss. And by photographing them up close, it throws the background out of focus, um, which makes it a perfect backdrop for these silhouettes that I lay over the top. So I'm going to pass around this illustration. It's a bit hard to see from here, probably. So that's an illustration from the first book I did with Karen. And my, my author, Kate Forsyth, <laughs> who's a magnificent Australian author. Um, and it's for a story called The Rainbow Prince. And I knew that I needed a bridge of skulls. Now, skulls I had plenty of. I have a skull shelf, in fact, in my library at home. Do you need to use it? I do. Of course I do. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, but I was trying to work out how to piece together those skulls into a cohesive bridge. And we had some friends today, and they went for a walk up behind the back of our house um, while I was working away. And they came back, and, and my friend had, had been wearing a beautiful blue and expensive silk scarf. And she brought it back all bundled up with a little knot tied in the top. She said, oh, I've got a present for you. You'll never believe what it is. And I knew that they'd just been walking in the bush up behind our house. So I put the bundle down opened up the knot and laid out the scarf. Inside was a pile of bones with a little skull perched on top. And while out walking, they'd found a whole fox skeleton laid out. It was clean 
had been completely picked over by ants, like this year. Usually, um, if something's dying out of the bush, it will be scattered <laughs> around by other foxes, dogs. But it was perfectly laid out, and they picked up every single bone for me and brought them home. And they were sleeping it off because it was the most perfect gift they could have brought. So I photographed all the bones one by one and made sure I photographed them to scale. And then I got on Google, how, did, how does a fox go together? So, um, it was like the most magnificent jigsaw puzzle I've ever done. <laughs> so I pieced together the um, skeleton again and, and the fox now lives on um, in this illustration. So that's how I, I work and how I make my books. Um, I've been a practicing artist for about 20 years, um, making this kind of work for about 10 years. I used to be total purist, black and white prints, made my own chemicals, locked myself away in the dark room for days at a time, and then I had children. <laughs> so obviously that wasn't going to be um, a realistic way of working. So I switched to, to digital, even though I thought it'll never take off. <laughs> Um, and I started making this montage work. So I've been working as an exhibiting artist for a long time. And um, this is a great story of the power of social media. I met Kate, or Simon, um, on Twitter through mutual friends. And she bought a print, which she liked so much, and we kept in touch. And she asked me one day what I was working on. I said, well, I'm working on this exhibition at the moment. Um, I'm going back and finding old fairy tales. Um, because what we think of as fairy tales now, so often are the princess tales. It's Rapunzel in her tower, it's um, Snow White asleep in the glass box. The, um, and the women don't have any agency in themselves, but I, we know that they're out there, we know that there's a long history of um, tales of girls and women slaying their own dragons, yeah. having their own adventures. So I'm going back, I'm finding these tales, and I'm making an artwork based around them. And Kate said, well, that's funny. I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm retelling them. I think we need to work together. And Basilisa was born, and with the most incredible serendipity, we found Serenity, <laughs> and we haven't looked back since. And if it wasn't for Karen and Serenity and, and um, for Jane, people uh, uh, that I'm working on with her now, I wouldn't be here. So I'm, I'm on my, my grand European tour from Collier. So I've been to France working on a book with an Australian author called Sophie Masson, um, for Karen as well, which will be a collection of French tales, some which have never been translated into English before. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> and so excited to be working with Jane. Her writing is so extraordinary. And as you heard from the way that she speaks her tales, that really is how these stories are written. They have the most incredible rhythm and depth and life to them. So. Um, it's going to be a good year working on those. And I'm going to pass on to the next person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's not so special to get that beautiful insight. Whenever I met Marina and seen her work, I thought, she is a genius. What she does with photography is amazing. So be sure to go and check out her work and um, over at, at the display um, and watch out for these special books. It was true, Kate and Marina's um, initial collection. We were only supposed to do one book and I think there's about seven books lined up now. So every March we release a new collection. And so this March we we're releasing a retelling of Snow White and Red Rose. So watch out for those, they're really special. <laughs> 